Welcome everybody to the Futurum Tech Podcast interview series, special edition. Excited today to talk about a new announcement that's going to be affecting the rollout of 5G, changing the way we communicate with the world. Going to have a guest coming on from Qualcomm, not going to spoil his surprise. Uh, he'll be with us in just a minute. Before we get started on this show, first of all, thanks everybody for tuning in. Stick with us, hit that subscribe button and join us. We are here every week talking to the world's largest tech companies and the leaders of these companies. And of course, focusing in on all the things, digital transformation, infrastructure, networking, communication devices, and so much more. Quick disclosure for everybody out there. I always have to do this. This show is for information and entertainment purposes only. So while we will be talking to publicly traded companies and about publicly traded companies, please do not take anything I say on the show or, or our guests as investment advice. Anyhow, big week, big news. Without further ado, let me bring Gerardo Gerretta from Qualcomm to join me here on the show. Gerardo, welcome. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Hey, Gerardo Gerretta. So I'll give everybody the title, Senior Director, Product Management, Qualcomm Technologies. Great stuff, but tell everybody what that means. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, I've been in Qualcomm for 15 years now, so pretty veteran there. I'm, I'm leading the overall infrastructure uh, uh, business and product management team. So everything that has to do with silicon and software solution in Qualcomm, that has to do with uh, small cell and micro cell uh, and private network. That's what I'm uh, I'm driving the business and the product definition for this. Well, excellent. I, 15 years sounds like a long time, but I imagine when you're working for a company that's inventing and innovating at scale and at pace, I'm sure you've had a lot of fun. That puts you in what? You came in around 3G, you yeah. rode the whole 4G wave, and now you're now you're... 5G, and of course, I'm seeing uh, some 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 media news and stories kicking around about big investments. And I think Qualcomm actually was named as one of the companies that's being touted as America's leader to get us to 6G. But let's let's not get there yet. We're still working on 5G. Um, Gerardo, you had some big news this week. I read it. I think it's very interesting, but I don't want to spoil it since I have you here. Um, this new partnership is all about accelerating 5G. Tell me, tell everybody about the news. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So, yeah, we had this joint announcement with Vodafone. Uh, it is really has to do with uh, accelerating 5G and the open run way to 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 develop uh, 5G. So we have announced that uh, we are going to develop together a reference design for the massive MIMO radio unit solution and distributed unit solution uh, based on the principle of open run. So uh, this is based on an announcement, uh, product announcement that we have done uh, uh, six months ago, where we have announced our new silicon uh, ASIC solution for macro base station. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty significant after six months, we have uh, a leader in the industry like Vodafone joining forces with us. And the goal is really to create a blueprint uh, for uh, open run ecosystem in order to deploy network to enable new entrants, enable uh, uh, maybe smaller player to enter into the market uh, and creating bigger diversity in the 5G infrastructure space. So hold that thought on all the benefits because there's a lot of questions I have about that. I want to take a step back. So we have a, a very technical audience, but we also have a lot of business leaders, CEOs, executives, uh, tech media, and not all of them understand some of the things you said. You talked about Open RAN, you talked about massive MIMO. Um, Give us a quick overview on the, on those particular uh, so open RAM, massive MIMO, and and really why are service providers and network infrastructure manufacturers so focused on this? Sure, sure. So uh, start with the easier one. So massive MIMO, massive MIMO is just that technique that uh, uh, together with multi-user MIMO in general is used uh, to increase the capacity of basically how many users and data a single site can process, right? And uh, the concept is to have a lot of antenna streams and dedicated some of these antenna streams for different users, right? So that at the same time, a single antenna can serve different users at the same time. That, that can be done without open run forever. So that's a separate aspect. The open run aspect is really about creating a more open ecosystem in the, into the radio access network. Right, so if you want, uh, originally uh, and up until now, I would say the 
the radio access network tends to be uh, pretty vertical with the same player uh, providing the full solution. And what now service provider operators around the world are looking at, can I break that apart a little bit and creating some diversification so that maybe some part of the radio access network can be provided uh, by one vendor and then there is an open interface, an open run interface, uh, an open protocol, so that that can easily interoperate with another part of the network, right? And that allows the service provider to have more diversification, probably lower cost and, and, and high rate of new features coming, coming into the network. Yeah, so these are all things that Qualcomm is very, the company is very busy working on. A lot of people out there don't always recognize they think of Qualcomm for the chips that go in smartphones, but the company's doing so many things. In fact, your earnings just came out yesterday. I think the company broke a billion dollars in IoT revenue. The RF front end business is, is nearing a uh, billion dollars and, and basically attacking that 5G and RF front end uh, capability is, is uniquely something that Qualcomm is now um, positioned to solve, which is gonna create a whole bunch of scale this is another example from an infrastructure standpoint where you're really uh, feeding the ecosystem. And that's something that Qualcomm does really well, feeds the ecosystem. It invents and creates and then enables, um, whether that's enabling device makers with uh, you, what you're doing with PCs, you're enabling companies to now use your technology to build PCs. And now you're enabling service providers to deploy infrastructure at scale. It's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. That's as a technology enabler is really in our DNA, right? So even in this particular case, I think it's important to understand uh, while we are starting this with Vodafone as a, as a joint partnership with Vodafone in defining this blueprint, we, we are going to work with many more partners because we ourselves, we're not going to, to build, we're not an infrastructure supplier ourselves. We're not going to bring, build the final product ourselves so uh, uh, this partnership eventually will include uh, additional players in the future because we don't provide all the components and other players are needed so it's really an ecosystem play uh, but it's it's uh, it's good to have some leaders like Qualcomm in particular Vodafone to drive a little bit the beginning uh, of this journey. Yeah so I'd like to let you dive into that a little further so we kind of went away from it and I want to come back to it and you just started alluding to it right now but if I'm hearing you correctly, this partnership isn't isn't only important because of Qualcomm and Vodafone, but it's really important because this blueprint and this blueprint as an enabler, because 5G, while you're seeing this deployed into new markets every quarter significantly and the scale is, it's I would say acceleration is the right word, um, but this has to help, right? Because essentially 5G, this infrastructure is really what makes it valuable right because 5g itself if you don't have this infrastructure in place it's not going to deliver faster performance and better experiences for users it really comes down to these components that you are working in this blueprint is a big part of that Co correct correct so we uh, uh, the as you said right in order to make the maximum out of 5g and the 5g technology uh, we need to deploy networks increase capacity deploy new features and so forth uh, and what we are looking at with vodafone is really creating a blueprint based initially a little bit on the vodafone requirement but then expanding to other operator requirements uh, so that we can really a uh, uh, showcase with some reference design and prototype how network can be deployed at the next level and again, based on the open run principles, right? So that uh, even startup or new players can play a role in, in that particular ecosystem, right? So it's really, uh, as I said earlier, an, a technology enablement and ecosystem enablement that, that we are going to do. It's not going to be Vodafone and Qualcomm only. Eventually, it's going to be more partners also because we as Qualcomm, you know, we are a key technology provider, but we don't provide all the components that are needed in the radio access network. There are components, uh, uh, both software and hardware that we don't uh, uh, personally develop. And so we will need partner to, to work with and to develop those components together and then to, to put everything together for a final product somehow, right? But yeah, the goal is really to make sure that we keep uh, uh, innovating, we keep innovating with 5G, we keep uh, deploying faster and more features uh, uh, into 5G uh, for, for the benefit of the consumer eventually, right? So if I can ask, um, 
how much so the blueprint is what i'm hearing here is is kind of the takeaway for listeners yeah. it's kind of like whether you're a software developer or using github to get you know pieces of code that can then be developed at scale to develop other pieces of software instead of inventing the wheel right and that's right. kind of what you're doing the blueprint here you're kind of saying the same thing we're going to give a foundation so whether you're a you know a carrier that, that supports or a service provider with a you know few hundred thousand clients in a small market, or if you're serving millions in a really dense market, we're going to give a foundation here and we're going to build it for Vodafone with Vodafone, but it could be, you know, it could be anyone. It could be T-Mobile, it could be Orange, it could be Verizon. It could, you know what I'm saying? Like over time, and there's parts and pieces in this initial rollout that they'll be able to take and then build, like you said, to tailor it for their network. How much faster does this enable like the rollout uh, of these in certain markets? Is this? Is, do you think there's a, 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 mar- a markable, uh, you know, expirable amount of time? Is it condensing it by 10, 20, 30 percent? And I know you're not exact, but I'm just kind of curious, like how yeah. much faster does this help yeah. the service providers move? I, I think I think it's difficult to put a, a number to it, but I think there there is a point that uh, uh, somehow it's. The infrastructure business and and market has been pretty uh, uh, limited the number of players that that in the past have been playing right, and we have seen now with VRAN and ORAN more and more players coming in, and and we just think that uh, somehow this blueprint will lower the barriers for those players to really be successful, right? Uh, so the 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 natural. Uh, acceleration of deployment will come uh, with the introduction of new vendors and new players, right? And, you know, when there are new players, new vendors, uh, then automatically increase the, the level of competition and increase the overall uh, 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 the value for the consumer. That's a great point. So part of the value here is we're bringing more players. It would be kind of like if you could only buy an iPhone or just a Samsung, and those are the only choices you had that would impact pricing and availability and supply. And, and historically speaking with, with infrastructure for comms, there's been a limited number of providers, kind of household names. And now you're you're sort of seeing that COSP and CSP um, starting to merge as new companies can start to raise their hand and say, we can build this or we can participate in this and, and start to add value. And you're starting to see the big cloud players, for instance, starting to be much more closely aligned to these stories and this type of technology is exactly the type that, that they will build off of. So let's uh, kind of wrap up here. It looks like over the next, it's about a year. So this isn't a long horizon thing because Qualcomm is a company that does things sometimes with a decade of horizon. You're really, you're building this now, you know, in the next year, this is going to start to take place in the market. You know, what kind of evolution uh, will you see this taking place? Is the biggest evolution sort of what you alluded to that other service providers are going to kind of follow suit here? Should we expect Qualcomm to be, you know, scaling and naming more partners? What's going to happen next? Yeah. So, so I mean, this is based, as I said, on the uh, uh, product that we have announced uh, six months ago. And, uh, uh, and so we have announced that that customer sampling of that particular product will be in the first half of next year. And so, uh, as we uh, mentioned this week with Vodafone, we are looking at trials by uh, uh, somehow the end of 22. uh, And that's where we can see uh, basically trials coming along based on this blueprint and based on this product. And then, you know, we expect from now until then to have more partners and and more players' interest in this space. Uh, And, uh, you know, and we expect then eventually the solution to be mainstream uh, sometime in 23 and then move from there, right? Excellent. Well, if it's anything like how the company has handled uh, partnerships with the OEMs, licensing agreements. Um, at this point, of what, what did I see here yesterday? Over 130 license agreements now with five G, in 5G, meaning basically every major device maker or provider that needs licensing access is now working with Qualcomm. Definitely at the center of the ecosystem for 5G, uh, helping to scale up the infrastructure, working closer with the service providers is just one more way to become imperative in this market. So uh, Gerardo, I just want to thank you for taking a little time here and chatting with me about this new development and congratulations. Thank you very much. It was great. Thanks a lot. All right, Gerardo.
Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. It was great to have Gerardo here to talk a little bit about what just happened with Qualcomm and Vodafone. These kinds of advancements are exciting. Uh, you'll see them slowly start to roll out, as he said, over the next year. But really what we love here is seeing the democratization of these technologies. We're starting to bring more and more players into the space. This means more infrastructure, more software, more uh, you know, contributors in this ecosystem. More contributors means more innovation, more competition, which generally speaking means good experiences for consumers. For this episode of the Future in Tech podcast, Future in Tech TV, I'm Daniel Newman. I want to thank you for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, like I always say. Join us for more shows, more executives, more topics, things that interest you in the tech space. But I got to go for now. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.